Tiny Tarot, hey, hey, what have you got to say today? I am Low Key Magical with a K, aka Christina Smart, and I am here with the podcast master, Earl. Earl, how are you today? Hello, I'm fine today. Good to hear that, Earl. And we are here with Tiny Tarot on the Tiny Tarot Podcast, which, by the way, is doing very well. I have to give a shout out to everyone out there that's been listening and watching on YouTube. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. We are on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Spotify, sometimes on the TikTok if I feel it. If you're lucky. That's like Mitch Jackson if you're nasty. Okay, no, not exactly like that. Well, today we are talking to Tiny Tarot. And let me emphasize once more, get some of the legal stuff out of the way. There's disclaimers all over my site. But tarot is not a substitute for therapy. Tarot is more like a really nice, deep conversation with a good friend that knows you well. So please do not take what I would call crazy action based on a tarot read you know that that this is something that it either resonates with you or it doesn't if it resonates then i hope you get some great new ideas if not then you can move on that's how it works thank you so much and today we have been talking to tiny tarot about relationships again and friends that we have and parts of uh, my own life where i felt i was on the relationship Mobius strip. So maybe it was different faces and it was different places, but I was experiencing the same kind of problems over and over again. So if you feel like there has been a time in your life where you were on a relationship Mobius strip, well, we're going to talk to Tiny Tarot today about how to get off of that, or at least how to make that Mobius strip a pleasurable one. It would be nice to go over and over the fun stuff over and over again, instead of, oh, I'm in the same crappy problem. I see. I seem to keep attracting the same type of partner, one that does not work for me. So how tiny tarot, do I get off of that relationship Mobius strip? And I'm going to tell you right now, tiny tarot is probably going to be like, you got to change some stuff about yourself like that. I'm just telling you, isn't that right, Earl? Sometimes tiny General, tarot. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> instead of like, oh, poor you. It's more like, okay, well, here's what you need to work on to change that. So Tiny Tarot, hey, hey, how do I get off the relationship Mobius strip today? And Earl, I have divided these cards up into uh, three equal piles, and I would like for you to please intuitively choose pile one, two, or three today. I'm thinking one. All right. Oh, hey, one. I I like it when it surprises me. Like, I might think, does that prove, um, how psychic are you if you don't know which pile? No, I like that surprise because to me it says things might go a little bit different today than where they were going to go. All right. So we are starting out with a page of swords. And of course we are, because this, the page is at the beginning of a journey and he's really excited. And the swords represent our thoughts and our ideas. And I feel like this is how we're coming to how we want our relationship to be. Like when it when you are in the Mobius strip, of the same thing happening over and over again, baby, that's what you want. You want some fresh new ideas. You want a fresh way to think about things. You want the excitement, baby, why isn't the excitement not related to him anymore? That's what you want. You want that excitement. The Page of Swords is on his way to becoming a knight. So I like to kind of include the night when I when I get a page. Think about the night. He has a code that he lives by and he is on a mission most of the time to uphold this higher code. Now the page isn't quite there yet. He is learning about that code. He's learning about what he needs to do to get to the point of being a knight. <clears throat> and that's where we are right here. And I'm going to give this disclaimer out too. From time to time, I clear my throat. That's tiny tarot reminding me, keep the chakra nice and open. Trust in the message. Okay. So we're looking at the page of swords and he is excited and he's ready to go. So that would be the first recommendation for this is, you know, instead of reiterating the same words over and over again of why do I keep 
repeating the same stuff over and over again? Why am I meeting the same kind of guy? Why do I always wind up feeling like I'm a little bit less, or I'm the one that's loving more in the relationship? It seems to happen over and over again. Okay, that's great. But remember that the way that we tell our stories impacts the way that we anticipate our future. So you have got to get some fresh new words coming out of your mouth. Maybe in the past, I have experienced some relationships that had some similar, some similarities to them that I felt were negative, but it's really easy for me to see that now, and I'm on a new path. So I'm putting some new ideas together. Hey, guess what? In my next relationship, I'm going to look for X, Y, Z instead of saying, well, I certainly don't want that anymore. I certainly don't want someone that's like this. And I certainly don't want someone that's like that. You're just putting more energy into what you don't want when you continue to repeat that story. <clears throat> so let's be careful about that. If you had your heart broken and you came through something that was difficult and you're very happy to be through it, and I'm proud of you that you are and that you're doing well. But goodness, if everyone you bump into gets that same story of, oh, look what I just came through, and it's just like before, and I'm, well, I don't think I want to date anybody for a while because it's just going to be the same thing. Man, how many times has that come out of your mouth where it's almost, you've got it memorized, you can kind of phase out, and then here's the story of the breakup, or here's the story of the last awful thing that happened to me. Baby, it shouldn't be able to roll off your tongue that easily. You've got to stop repeating it over and over again. The Page of Swords doesn't worry about what's happened behind him. It's all fresh and new up front. So let's look at it that way first. Okay, so you're out of a Mobius strip of relationship. Yay, you're free from that rodeo rope. Now you get to make something fresh. Stop saying what was bad about the previous one. You've got that list. You know that list is there. Okay, it's not going to go away. You don't have to reiterate it, carve it in stone every time you meet someone. Hey, what happened? What went down? Uh, It was awful, but I'm on to something new. Like you can just truncate it like that. Yeah, it sucked. It was awful. But hey, guess what? I'm on to something new. I don't even worry about that stuff anymore. The sword that I am taking with me is all of the knowledge that I gained from what just went down that we don't have to go over and over again. And yes, right next to that is a page of pentacles. It's the same kind of thing. I am going to redefine what is really important to me, and what really makes me comfortable in this world. Ooh, so not only am I changing what I say and how I think about this relationship Mobius strip, but I'm also going to redefine what is truly important to me before I take the next step. Ooh, because let's think about it like this. If you don't have your priorities clearly in place. Or if if a complete stranger came and sat down and had a really deep conversation with you, what are your values? Have you ever really sat down and thought about that? Not repeating what someone else said your values should be, okay? Not what the expectations are. Well, I've got to be a good mom, and I got to be a good sister, and I got to be a good... Let's look at what your values are inside of you, because you've really got to have those nailed down and in place for you to be able to come to a relationship and expect those values to line up with yours. Because if you haven't defined those values for yourself and you're kind of wishy-washy, then when a relationship presents itself to you that may not be 100% of what you want, it may not be, oh, there's some compromises. I don't really think like he does or she does it. Remember, gender is completely out of this, but I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you examples. You know, I've realized that this person that I'm dating doesn't think you have to be that nice when it comes to the X, Y, Z, or they don't really, ah, you know what? That was a little bit, I don't really agree with that. Some of these things are kind of hurting my intuition a little bit. Why, why does it make my stomach hurt when I hear him say that? Well, probably because you've got some values that are misaligned there. And you were really hoping that this person that you were dating or getting to know was going to line up with all those values. But all of a sudden you hear something or you feel something or there's an interaction that makes you go, whoa, hey, that's not really. Now, in that moment, you have a choice. 
And if you have your values clearly in line and you know who you are and something suddenly isn't resonating with you, then you can feel powerful in that moment to say, hey, 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 you know that thing that just happened? That really made me feel bad. What was up with that? This is something we need to discuss if we're going to keep hanging out together. I don't like it when you take a tone or I don't like it X, Y, Z, or I've never really thought about it that way. And I don't, this is something that we don't agree upon. But those of us that have been a little scared and desperate and don't have those values in line in that moment, we go, well, I really don't want to mess this up. So I'm just going to pretend that that didn't happen. I'm going to compromise in this moment and go, oh, that was completely okay that he said that or did that or, or took that or borrowed that or whatever it was that I felt was kind of out of line in the moment. What's more out of line? Something like that happening or something like that happening and you letting it slide because that's the first slippity slide that leads you to that Mobius strip of what you've always done because you didn't have the gumption, you didn't have the guts, you didn't have your own values in place solidly enough to back you up to say, this is not what I like. Because there's a lot of us, especially those of us that <clears throat> of the female persuasion that have kind of been taught that that's not a feminine thing to do. That's not really ladylike to in the moment say, hey, this is not something that I like. Well, obviously, you're not going to, you know, in the middle of a dinner, like call somebody out. But you've got to understand that when you feel that twang of something is not right about this, it is your intuition telling you to address it. This is an important moment of decision where you're not feeling like you're on the right path at the moment. How do you rectify this? I know what my values are. So I know that little twang wasn't just me going, oh man, maybe he doesn't, you know, maybe, maybe. No, it's something saying something that just happened does not fall in line with what you clearly have written in stone is important to you. Okay, this may be new, new relationship, new path, new, but you know what's important to you and what you just heard, what you just felt doesn't fall in line with that. What are you going to do? That's the moment of choice. And in the past, when you would gloss that over, because, oh, I don't want to stir things up. We're just barely getting to know each other. I don't want to, I don't want him thinking that I'm that kind of girl that I get all, if you don't address that right then, then there's one compromise goes into that little cluck, okay? And you know that you've been in relationships where you have compromise and compromise and compromise and compromise and compromise until you're painted into a corner and then you have to take some kind of drastic action, right? To get out of that because you feel like now you are not even the person that you came into the relationship as to start with. You're stuck in that Mobius strip again. So you have got to get those things in order. One, Tiny Tarot's like, already get it. One, get the thoughts in order. Fresh thoughts, new thoughts, fresh words, new words. This is going to be different. And how do we do that? I have got my values in order. I know what's important to me. Let's say, you know, I've got kids. So that's going to be something. I've got to have somebody that's loyal and trustworthy and I can trust with my kids. And I've got to have, you know, all of those things. Somebody that's kind and somebody that... Uh, has their own finances in order. Like those are, those are realistic values to have in place. And then you know that what the universe is coming to you, you may get some close, but not quite. It's your job to determine the not quite. And it is okay to say this one isn't quite. We get a little scared about that too. Oh, if this is what the universe brought to me, and then I say, oh, something's wrong with it, I may not get another I may not get another chance. Okay, that's not the case at all. And, and we, know, we know better than to settle for close but not quite. And we know that close but not quite isn't just like, well, his hair color is the wrong. No, no, no. We're talking about like respect in the household, respect for the things that you respect, okay? Those true values that show you what a good person is. Hold to those things. Hold to those things. And don't compromise on that. I mean, Tiny Tarot absolutely says almost every time you've gotten stuck in that shoots and ladders Mobius strip where you found yourself in the same place it was because you compromised your values and it became okay. In the moment that you do that, it becomes okay. 
for that person to take that advantage of you because you never said anything about it before. You cannot expect your partner to absolutely read your mind. I do love that we're all becoming more psychic. It's getting harder to lie to each other. That's wonderful. But there are certain things that I'm just not going to know unless you tell me. And your partner's not going to know unless you tell them. And if you keep your mouth shut and just let things slide, you're sliding right into that Mobius strip. <clears throat> okay, so we're taking better control of our thoughts and our words, okay? We're changing our expectations of what's coming for us next, and we are getting our values strongly in order. And then what does that do? That leads to this nine of pentacles, and I absolutely love this card. This is a person that is confident and strong. Now, the nine is one of those magical three numbers, so it builds on itself, that means that the energy that you put into what you're doing here is going to exponentially grow things for you. And what exactly are you growing? Okay, right? We don't want to get stuck into the same place that we've always been. So in this nine of pentacles, it says you've, you've cultivated what you know is valuable to you. Okay, you've got that set in stone and you're not willing to compromise that anymore. And what does that do? Relationship or not, that grows the things that are important to you to a ridiculous level. And this is home comfort. And I always equate this to the the metaphor that I get is the you planted some blackberries in the backyard and you kind of forgot about them. You were like, yeah, I'm going to water them. That's cool. But you know, you forgot. And then you came back the next season and they are just over grown with fruit. The return on your investment is so much more than what you even expected. So here we start. He's only got one pinnacle, this little page. That's all he's got to start with. And maybe that's just the most important value to you that you weren't. You have just put your foot down and said, I'm not going to compromise when it comes to the love for my kids, or I'm not going to compromise when it comes to this peaceful household that I have already built you as part of my relationship, you're going to come in and be part of that. You're not going to come in and take it over. You're not going to come in and change it or say this, what you've built has no value. We're going to change all this. No, I have what's important to me. It may be small, but it's what I've built and it's what I know is valuable to me. And when you go into relationship with that true, not a chip on your shoulder attitude, but a true understanding of what and who you are and where you've come from and everything that you've built along the way. When you come to relationship with that, oh, what you have to offer is ridiculous. And then if somebody can't come in and respect that, they don't get you. Like that's just it. There is no compromise on that. There is no compromise on that. This one doesn't have to compromise. You can come and play in my beautiful garden or not. You know what I mean? Like you can either you can either follow the rules of the garden and come in and play happy by my rules, right? Or or you just don't because I'm happy either way. You're building something so fantastic and so wonderful when you foster what's truly valuable to you that you are like, hmm, you become such a catch at that point. Like that's the word I'm looking for. That girl is a catch. She's wearing all the beautiful robes and has the bird of paradise on her shoulder because nature loves someone that's got their shit together. And this one has got her shit together. Absolutely. Knows her own values. Knows what she's looking for. Isn't going to compromise. Not in a terrible way that you're holding up a shield and refusing to, because there's that, there, there is that whole, because we talked about that, that queen of swords thing that can happen when you've been wounded over and over again, that you kind of get that attitude is I'm just, I'm just going to come to the table. It's difficult to start with. And if you can get through my boundaries, good luck. You might have a relationship. You know, what, what are you fostering when you come to the table that way? No, Tiny Tarot says, oh, all right. This is beautiful. King of cups. And what do the cups represent? Mm. They represent our hearts that are filled with the waters that are our emotions. And the king, oh, he really understands the value of that heart. He really, really insists that his heart be respected. Oh, my goodness. And he doesn't take any less. When you're the king, 
You don't have to take any less. Okay, so now, baby, my standards just got raised because guess what? I have changed the way that I think. I have changed the words that I say. I have really solidified my internal values. I know what I'm bringing to the world is so good and I've got it honed, right? I've got who I am down and I'm good with it and I am growing more and more. I am becoming that catch. Mm. And because of that, I don't just dip my cup just anywhere. I mean, come on. You, you really, these standards of yours have just gotten higher. Oh, this is a good conversation. Yeah, but the guys that I'm attracted to, let's talk about that. Yeah, but the women that I'm attracted to, they all seem to have this. Now, what are you determining is attractive in a person that might not be working in your best interest. Let's get, let's one more time. Let's get those values down. So let's say that you're, well, I always like a man that's confident. And the way that I see confidence is that X, Y, Z. Well, maybe what you are determining is confidence. Maybe that's something that other people don't see as confidence. Maybe because of that Mobius strip of a relationship cycle that you've been in, you have started seeing some traits as attractive when those same traits are tied to things that actually cause you some problems. So let's say I like a man that's assertive, okay, but you're actually with a guy that's pushy. You're actually with someone that interrupts you. You're actually with someone that constantly devalues your opinion. Well, I like a guy that's physically built and has confidence. Yes, that is a thing. But you can also get with a guy that can be physically overbearing. You can also get with a guy that gets a little too physical with you. You can also be with a guy who's so egotistical. Like some of these subtleties get missed, when we have been in relationships that were unhealthy and then we tried to label them as healthy, some of these things that you have labeled as, well, this is my type, you know, maybe that type is coming with some traits that are automatically causing you to compromise and you really need to reevaluate that. What are those true values that you are looking for. Hey, you know what? I'm not so I'm not so worried about the physicality. I want some to, someone to be healthy, but I want confidence and I want it to be a healthy kind of confidence where we can speak with even back and forth real discourse like a little talking. Here's what I no no yelling. We don't yell at each other. It doesn't work that way. Really hone these things down and look at what you have been determining as, who there's something in that guy just stirs me up. Let's take that apart a little bit and make sure that what you are determining as attractive is truly a healthful trait for you through not just your eyes. In some cases, the king has got to have some advisors. Mm. Someone that can look at things objectively and say, hey, is that a, you like, you like that because he's, you know, like confident or you, you realize he was super rude to the waiter. Like, is that the kind of guy? Oh no, that's not the kind of confidence that I'm talking about. You see what I mean? Really listen to these things with open ears and understand where it's time to say I am the king and I do not compromise when it comes to this, okay? And noticing that early on before you are embroiled in that Mobius strip. Be the king of cups. Be the guardian, the sovereign of your own heart. Whew, that's big. And he sits atop of those waters because he knows you know what? I was good going into this. I was good. I was myself coming into this. I've made good decisions going into this relationship. If I do find myself repeating things over and over, I know that I have the ability to say, hey, this is something we need to work on or I'm out. Like it's that simple because the king knows that his heart needs to be respected. And if not, he's going to take it and he's going to put it somewhere else that it will be respected. The king just, that's how the king is. It's, it's really having that. And how can you know, I'm going to move some cards over here. I don't know. How, how can you know that you're the king in that situation? Because you've been through the battle. This is the nine of wands. You have been through it. 
How many, how many of these Mobius relationships have you come through? Or at least, especially with your friends, you know, it doesn't just count with your relationships. You always have a better view when you're looking into someone else's, you can see those behaviors. So just like your friend's lenses get clouded where you're like, why can't they see that? Understand that your lens has been clouded a little bit as well, and that it's time to clear that off. It's time to clear up the words. It's time to get your values in order. It's time to grow what's really important to you, to be the king and protect those values, protect that heart. Don't let your emotions be played with. And how do you know you're the king, really? Because you've been through it. You have done the work. The Nine of Wands is someone that has been through multiple, multiple battles. See the little bandage around his head? So he is someone that you can come to for knowledge. Someone that knows the work that needs to be done. So when you do get into this kind of a, you've got all of these lined up. At that point, let's say you're, your relationship does become some work, you know the work that needs to be done. You know exactly, and especially moving forward, if you're in between relationships right now, then you now know the work that you need to do on yourself to become that Nine of Pentacles, King of Cups. I am proud of what I've built. I am proud of the values that I have in place. I'm proud of what I've been able to accomplish on my own. That puts me in a kingly, in a kingly place where I make the decisions as to what happens to my heart next. And I know this because I have come through it. I have done the work. A, you know the work that needs to be done. And B, you know, you've already done so much. It's like credibility. That's like a credibility card. <sighs> okay. So tiny tarot, where does that lead? Because I do like the fact that it went from wands to wands, four of wands. Oh, baby, this is stability in what you have built. Mm. And this, if you look at the bottom of the four of wands, it is a, it's like a celebration. Like a ha I think of this as like the medieval wedding where they have the, the fourth that, you know, and the, I don't even know what to call that, but they have the little gazebo kind of thing built out of poles and they have the little flower, um, wreaths going around it and everyone's toasting and everyone's dancing and everyone's so happy. And that's the four of wands. It's wonderfully stable. Whatever you build on this foundation is going to be strong. That's what this says. You put all of this into place, which isn't difficult to do. It really starts with that main changing the way you think, changing the way that you speak about a lot of things. And when you put all of this into order, when you are the king and you know why you're the king, because you've been through it, because you've done the work, because you can see what you need to do and you do it, you're not afraid. Ah, bah, fear is a big part of this. You're not afraid anymore when you're the king. It builds everything that you decide to do from that point on, relationship or not. Hey, some of us have had jobs that have turned into like a Mobius strip kind of a situation. Some of us have had ongoing, you know, parent-child relationships or ongoing relationships with your own family members that kind of seem to rotate into that same, man, why do we always do that same thing? When you change that when you are the one that takes the reins and says, hold on now, I've realized that one of the common denominators in all this Mobius strip is me. And that I am the only one that can change. I can't change other people and I can't change their behaviors, but I can set myself so straight that I really only attract that which vibes with me. And it's super easy for me to uh, recognize when it doesn't vibe with me and I'm on to something else. Mm. So I know that when I make the decision to build something, it's on a stable foundation. And it's going to move me towards more and more goodness. Everything that you build from then on just gets better and better. Can you imagine a relationship that doesn't end in that, uh, I thought we were on the same page, but we weren't. And blah, blah, blah. Can you imagine that? Again, we think about... If you have been wanting whole and healthy, but you've never really felt whole and healthy, you don't really know what that feels like when you want a stable and loving and trusting growth-based, respect-based relationship, but you've never really experienced that, you've got to understand that it's going to feel different. So you have to feel that for yourself so that you know what that resonates with before you move into the relationship and just expect that other person to make you feel that way. Oh, 
<sighs> okay, well, I feel like that was probably the biggest thing that Tiny Tarot had to say. If you have been saying, I really want someone else to come into my life, to help me feel whole and healthy, help me restore my values, help me change the way I think, kiddo, you're going to have to take a hold of that and do that work yourself. You are the one that clears up your thought process. You are the one that secures your values and stands behind them. You are the one that grows something beautifully that you can be proud of. And then once you are the king, and you know you are, the relationship that comes to you is nothing but happiness and stability. Mm, tiny tarot. That feels like a little bit of a smack, but I am happy to hear that all of this is possible for us. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Again, don't forget that we are on YouTube and we are also on Facebook, Instagram, and Spotify. Look us up, like, share, subscribe, and Earl the Podcast Master, thank you so much for being here today. I am Low-Key Magical with a K. Have a magical rest of your day.